Not too long ago, I watched a video by a pretty large YouTuber who made some oddly disparaging remarks about needing to install a mod just to get Fallout to run, but I'm here to tell you that if you've got the Steam, GOG, or Bethesda.net version, that just isn't true. In this video, I'm going to go over the best settings to stream and play the current Steam versions of both the original Fallout and its sequel, Fallout 2. And I'm also going to explain how to find and install the exact same mods Bethesda is including with the current digital release to get the games to run on newer systems, so owners of the original CDs can use these settings too. As of the date this video is published, the Steam version is the same version as what's being offered on GOG as well as Bethesda.net, with one minor difference on the Bethesda.net version which I will get into at the end, so everything I'm going to show you should work exactly the same no matter which store you bought it from. To show you these settings, I've completely deleted my old installs and reinstalled a fresh copy of both games from Steam. Don't worry, I made backups. So let's get started. Here's good old Steam in 2020, and here's my install of the original Fallout game. The first time you open either game, it'll open in full screen mode and change the resolution of your monitor, just like pretty much every other game made for Windows. You can play the game this way just fine, even if you have multiple monitors, it just messes with your desktop pretty hard. Once the game is started though, clicking the options button will bring up a submenu with game preferences and screen settings. If you want to have a slightly less janky experience, open the screen settings option and change the resolution to match your desktop settings. However, since most modern monitors have such high resolutions compared to what existed when these games were first made, the game maps will look tiny and zoomed out and might not be all that comfortable to look at, let alone play. The fix for this is to click the scaling X2 button, but you'll note that only a handful of resolutions are supported for this mode. Even if your monitor's desktop resolution is supported, whenever you all tab out, the game will shrink to the taskbar revealing whatever you have open on the desktop. This is fine if you're just playing the game of course, but if you're streaming, especially with a multi-monitor setup, you might want to change up a couple of other settings. Clicking the windowed button will enable windowed mode of course, and this will probably work for you if you have a default resolution that's not supported, like a 4K ultrawide or something, but it is possible to get borderless windowed mode, though you can't do it within the game. Don't worry though, the process is easy. In Steam, right click the entry for Fallout to bring up the context menu and select properties. Once the new window opens, select the local files tab and click browse local files. This will open the install directory for the game, which will have in it, along with several other goodies, a program named f1resconfig.exe. If you were running Bethesda.net, you would click game options and select show in folder from the drop down menu. And if you're using the GOG launcher, right click the game icon, open the manage installation drop down menu and select show folder. Whatever launcher you use, f1resconfig.exe should be located in the install directory for your Fallout game. For the next step, run f1resconfig.exe, then enable and configure the high res mod that comes pre-installed with the game. You can manually enter your resolution here if it doesn't show up on the list, as well as turn on and off windowed mode or scaling times too. But the most important setting you have to click on is the manually edit config button. This will bring up f1res.ini, a config file for the high res mod that's stored in your app data folder, and here you'll see the same information shown in the f1res config program, plus a whole bunch more. The important setting for streaming is the windowed full screen setting, which by default is set to zero or off. Set this to one or on, save f1res.ini, and then start up Fallout to see if the settings work for you. One quick note, besides my 1080p monitor which does show up on the scaling x2 list, I also have some 1440x900 monitors that don't show up when I turn on scaling x2. I was able to manually set the INI file to match the 1440x900 resolution of my side monitor while keeping scaling times 2 and windowed full screen on to get a Fallout game that fills the screen but that cuts off the bottom a bit. It's nothing big, but you can't scroll down on the map with a mouse, you completely lose access to the Pip-Boy button, and you can't see the bottom line or two of the description box. On the other hand, you can use the arrow keys to scroll around the map, and there's a keyboard shortcut for the Pip-Boy button, so the trade-off might be worth it for somebody. If you know of a better way to get scaling times 2 mode working on unsupported screen sizes for the high-res mod, please let me know and tell me how to get it to work because this one is beyond me right now. A couple of other settings I like to change before starting a game. Open the screen settings again and change the pathfinding range from normal to max. This allows your character to find a path even when it's across the map, otherwise you just get a big red X whenever you try to move long distances. I also like to open game preferences and change the combat speed from normal to fastest, 
have it affect the player's speed, maybe turn down the volume a little and change running from normal to always. This will speed up movement and combat in most situations during the game, the one caveat being that having always running turned on makes it difficult to sneak, and you should probably turn it off if you're going for a sneak build. After you've done all that, start up a game, and this is what it should look like. Fallout of Pot 2 The settings are all exactly the same for Fallout 2. Try to match your resolution to what's on the list. Scaling times 2 in windowed mode work, but the most important setting is hidden in the f2res.ini configuration file, which is stored on your app data folder. Not the one in the game folder for some reason. Opening the install folder for Fallout 2 will reveal the f2resconfig.exe program. Run it and enable the high res patch, then manually edit the config file, find the windowed full screen setting and change it from 0 to 1, then save the file, close everything out, and start the game. Again, I like to make the same changes to pathfinding range, combat speed, affect player speed, and running that I did for the original Fallout, and then start the game to see what it looks like. If everything worked right, it should look something like this. There are a couple of special things about the version of Fallout 2 being sold on digital outlets right now. One, holding left shift will now highlight items that are on the ground, and two, holding control and one of the keys 0 through 6 on the number pad will change the emulation speed of the game as long as it's done when you have control of the chosen one. If you're using the Bethesda.net version of Fallout 2, item highlights and speed hack might not be enabled by default, but I have another video up explaining how to enable them for that version if you happen to get that game for free, say, when you purchase Fallout 76. V -v -v Vintage CD versions. And finally, for those of you lucky enough to have original copies of these two games, it's really easy to get the high res mod working on your game too, though it does take some effort. There are four steps to this. 1. Install the base game from the original CD, or its backup. 2. Install the official patches. 3. Install the high res mod. And 4, which is optional, install the S-Fall mod. S-Fall mod applies only to Fallout 2, and the game will play just fine without it. Okay, I'm going to assume you already know how to install the game, so let's skip that step. Next, you have to patch your fresh from the CD install with the official patches. Download links will be in the description, of course. If you installed it from CD and forgot where you installed it to, just right-click the shortcut icon and select Open File Location. For Fallout 1, open the fallout1w.zip file, then open fall11.zip, and copy the contents to the base Fallout folder where you installed the game. Answer yes when prompted to override existing files. Congratulations, Fallout 1 is fully updated. For Fallout 2, copy the contents of the patch file to the base Fallout 2 directory. Ignore the readmes, their instructions only apply to the original patch executable, which nobody uses anymore. Congratulations, your game of Fallout 2 is now patched. Once your game is patched, download the correct high res mod, links for both Fallout and Fallout 2 downloads are in the description, unzip the files into the relevant Fallout game folder, and run the high res patch executable that you just extracted. After that, everything else is exactly the same as earlier in the video. And if you want your install of Fallout 2 from the original CD to be the exact same version as what's being sold on Steam and GOG, then download and install the S-Fall mod version 3.2, link in the description. The Bethesda.net version uses 2.9. Just to be clear, the S-Fall mod only works on Fallout 2, not Fallout 1. The equivalent for Fallout 1 is the fixed mod, but since it's not included with the current digital release, and since it's more of an unofficial patch, I won't cover it here. I might cover it in a separate video if there's interest, so leave comments to let me know there's interest. You can also install the latest version of S-Fall, version 4.2.6, as of the making of this video, but be warned, there are a lot of excellent exploits, bugs, and glitches that are quote-unquote fixed with this mod, and it's not necessary to play the game anyway, although I would really miss item highlights and the speed hack that S-Fall has. So I absolutely don't blame you if you want to install one version or the other of it. Installing S-Fall is pretty easy, just download the version you want and extract the contents to your base Fallout 2 folder and start the game up. Links of course will be in the description. A quick test to see if it's working is to start a new game with the default character, open your inventory, and hold control and press 6 on the number pad to change the game speed. By default, the speed settings are 0 on the number pad is half speed, 1 is normal game speed, 2 is 1.5 times speed, 3 is 2 times speed, 
four is three times speed, five is four times speed, and six is ten times speed. If you're interested, these settings and the buttons you press can all be changed in the ddraw.ini file you just extracted into the base Fallout 2 folder to install the mod. If everything works, you're in business. Go play some Fallout 2, have some fun. If it doesn't, well, drop a comment and I'll try and help. That's all I've got for this video. If you've played Fallout or Fallout 2 before and are looking for something fresh to do, check out my Fallout Glitch series where I document some of the craziest exploits you can find in these two crazy awesome games.